he just like to dive alone? Yeah. No, no that's, that's absolutely possible. Well, it's absolutely still, still doesn't make it a good idea. No. no. Um, so he was, like we said, no, he's he's certified to dive uh, in open water. He's not certified to dive in caves. Uh, and as we said, he had he decided that what he wanted to do was become a dive instructor. He had also expressed to his family that he wanted to learn to cave dive, and then he wanted to open his own dive business. Well, yeah, I think one one way to learn to cave dive is to do it with a qualified instructor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, Another so, way to do it is to read a lot and then just do it. Which is what you, I I'm sorry. I should be clear. I'm making a joke. Yes. Please do not do that. Do not do that. Yeah. Okay. So we here's can't the thing. to lose any listeners. If you, I want I want people who are interested in this to do this, which is to look up technical diving and look at the sort of huge list with a certain number of hours of every one of them before you can be and have that to your technical diving record you can have that and say i can do this okay it's all hours based ben wanted to do this thing so he was going underwater and logging tons and tons and tons of hours at a breakneck speed to say so if a certification takes takes a hundred hours he's like well if i go six hours a day every day i'll be there in no time flat Mm -hmm, you know it'll take me less than two weeks i can totally make this happen well that's not the way that you're supposed to do it because the reason that it takes hours is so that you learn how to do certain things they become automatic reactions and automatic functions so that when you're in a catastrophic situation you automatically react in the proper way and that wasn't what he was doing he was just piling on the hours based on his log books anyway yeah um which is a, a can, do you want to explain real quick what a log book is oh well, that's a very good question yeah <laughs> so i just seemed so standard I know, it's to one me of those ones. a log book is quite literally a book where you write in a log of your activity, something like a time card. You say, went in the water at, did X, Y, Z, exited the water at, so for a total of time of underwater. I mean, and that's it. And then it's a tally, and you're just keeping a record of everything you're doing. And good practice is then to go back and reread your log books yeah. to think about things that you did. And this is why you don't do things at such a high speed say once a week you go dive for three hours and then you reread your logbook three weeks later like i totally don't remember oh that's right and then i do Mm -hmm. this like you know i equate it to the same thing as taking a final Mm -hmm. did you guys ever do this you'd cram like mad before the final and then take the test and remember none of it the next day after the test after after the test oh yeah 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 Yeah, that's how i did finals for sure yeah but i mean that's not what you're supposed to do though no and i think you also in your logbook you take notes and draw diagrams and Mm -hmm. you know any important information i suspect you also say things like here's what my oxygen tank was at when i went in here's what it was at when i came out here's long how long it took to decompress decompress. here's how i'm feeling you know here's how i'm feeling the next day feeling kind of bad well that's more of a dear diary but i'm I'm making jokes (laughs) but i mean i think those are all very important things to be keeping track of as well probably you probably should be paying attention to how your body reacts to all that crap Mm -hmm. yeah and you have to give your body time to react yeah is the really important part right yes because if it turns out that the next day something is going to negatively affect you if you just keep doing it and doing it and doing it and you haven't given your body time to do that reset you're (laughs) done for yeah no, absolutely. So that's what a logbook is. Yes. Okay. All right. So let's go to the 18th of August, 2010, which was a Wednesday, by the way. Uh, ben McDaniels went in the early part of the day. He took a dive in Vortex Spring and went down. And afterwards, he was seen by people hanging around. So it wasn't like he did his dive, came out, went home. He hung around. He was writing his logbook. He's adjusting his gear. Uh, We know that at one point he went and filled his tanks because of some security footage. We don't know what he filled his tanks with, whether it was just a regular air mix or some specialized mix. We don't know. But you mean by his tanks? I mean, he, there were other tanks that were found that didn't yeah, have air. Yeah, this in them. is the question. But the ones okay, that he was we actually don't know, wearing, we don't know about those. We don't ones, know right? which tanks he put the air in. 
Uh, whether I, they the ones that he was wearing and disappeared with, or the ones that were subsequently found after the they fact. Also, we also don't know for 100% certainty that the ones that were found after the fact were actually Ben's. It's the, I mean, the evidence it's is pretty, pretty strong. Strong, but we we don't. Know. They don't say Ben McDaniel's etched into them. I mean, You're they do right. now, but they didn't <laughs> no, when they, they were don't. found. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, and also another thing that's frustrating about this mystery is I would like to know exactly how many tanks Ben owned. Mm-hmm. That would be useful. I don't I'm, know if there's a way to find that out. Well, I guess he could call his family, but the problem is, is they might not even know. In they fact, probably, they probably don't. don't. Uh, yeah, I don't know that they they have an accurate number, and I don't know that anybody's ever said that. That's it's a really good thing, and I thought the same question. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it's not. I mean, the, I believe that if the tanks that were found were Ben's, then he had at least four tanks, if not more. Mm-hmm. But he had to have had <laughs> well, they at found least three, so he would have had to have had at least four. Yes, it would right? take actually five because you don't cave dive without two tanks. Right. Well, yeah. you shouldn't. Well, uh, yeah, I guess you could, but it'd you be could really if you dumb. were going for an all-time record of some kind. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, but but oh, that was what my face was. Was that you know we they found the tanks and they found at least two of them had the ex the special mix in it. The regular air. The no, regular. They had regular air in them. Oh. They weren't a special mix at all. Oh, two of them. They, that's right. I'm sorry. I had them switched. Mm-hmm. Two of them were normal air and one of them was a special mix. Mm-hmm. Right. But the ones but, that were, yeah. Which was weird, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's weird. Placement. Because as I said before, we, if you're going to dive in that cave and you're going to go to that depth, you should be using the special gas, uh, the gas mix, not just regular air mm-hmm. for the decompression issue. So yeah, there's, but I there's thought a that... very questionable judgment in terms of the way he went about it. Well, I thought that normal air was used when they were coming up during decompression, that, that they would be your cans for deep, like when you're coming up slowly once you were above a certain, no? I, I may have made that up. I, no, I, I, I was I would say, think it would be. Yeah. I, I actually don't know enough. I remember reading so much about it, and there's so much technical details that I will be honest, I do not remember the right okay. answer to that. Yeah. So I, I don't know. If I would right. just think that if you're using something special below 130, it means that you can't use that something special above 130 feet. No. You, no, it, yeah, that does You can use it above. Yeah, you can use it above. Yeah. yeah. Mind. No, but I, it I, totally I, doesn't stop you from I, using it at the same yeah. set. But I imagine it's probably cheaper to buy just regular old compressed air than it is to buy the special mix. So yeah. that might that might account for the That's cheap, true, but I don't I don't bottles. know that, that he was really concerned with cash either. Yeah, I don't well, have that sense. Yeah. Given that. some things that we're gonna talk about in a little bit here. Actually let's Let's leave those tanks uh, where they are, and I don't mean <laughs> that as a pun. Yeah, so, I'm going to okay, do this sorry. all the time. But so, they, so he filled his tanks. He fills his tanks. Okay. And then Vortex Spring closes at 4 o'clock at night. So everybody who's swimming and having a good time goes home, but Ben goes for a dive at sometime around 7 or 7.30 that night. So did, he, was he, did he sort of have a, a bro thing going with the people, that owned, the people that owned it? Is that uh, how he could do that? Well, the divers could stay and finish their dive. So swimmers, the people that are using the oh. zip line and everything, hey, hey guys, pool's closed, get out, you know, to get all those people out of there. But if you're a diver and you go in at 3 o'clock and you got two or three hours worth of air, you're going to stay under. Yeah. And so I, I don't know how it was that he would wrangle the I'm going to go in after the, the pool is closed thing. It's not as if the pool was gated off. If you looked at pictures, you could walk in anywhere. You really could. I mean, there's an entrance with stairs for divers, but he could have literally gone in at any point. I had a sense that the owner of Vortex Springs, Lowell, uh, Lowell Kelly. Yeah, Lowell Kelly, really liked Ben. Or at least after the fact, seemed to like Ben. Uh, okay, I think thank he you. just <laughs> gave him <laughs> clarification. I think he just didn't care, and Ben was kind of at least amicable with the people who ran it. Given the bit we're going to talk about mm-hmm. in a second here, so I think I mean I think he just was doing it. It was against the rules, but they were kind of like, well, he's going to do it either way, so we can't stop him. Yeah. Or he paid people off. Also possible. Absolutely, that's absolutely a possibility. So he here's the thing: though. We, no money. we know that he's in the water because somewhere around 7.30 that night, as he's going down through the entrance of the cave heading to the gate, he passes two other divers who were exiting the cave, who also happen to be employees of Vortex Spring, and their names are Chuck Cronin and Eduardo Taran. And Eduardo stops. I mean, they pass him. He stops. He signals to Chuck, says, you know, wait. Goes back to Ben, and he unlocks the gate for Ben. 
Yeah. And that is because they were convinced that Ben had been going into the cave and however he was doing it, he was bypassing that gate. Uh, well, he was wearing his helmet and lights. He was wearing, yeah, he's wearing his, all of his gear mm-hmm. to go into and the cave. And helmet, that's the important bit. Yes. Right? He's wearing you, a helmet. You could go down, it's called p- the piano room. Is mm-hmm. that is this big open cavern right before the gate, um, which is like kind of the last stop for any in normal. It's where fiber. the gate is, yeah. Basically, yeah. So I think you can go down there without a helmet. Correct. Into the piano room, mm-hmm. but when you go deeper, you need a helmet. So that was, I thought, why they thought he was definitely going for a cut. Well, yeah. If he's yeah. if he's in that area, yeah. then it's pretty obvious what he's doing. Well, you know, and the, the thing about it is, he's been hanging around so much. You got to figure he's pushing the cave, you know, ever deeper all the time. Yeah. Um, but and, and I, I heard one of the reasons is it's not just the, the whole going around thing, but the, the, he figured that if you let him in, that would save Ben uh, five minutes maybe of air. Yeah. Yeah. That's, 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 yeah. that's the only logical reason that I can think of. Now, at first I thought, well, I mean, it only takes a minute or so to get in, so who cares? But really where it's important is when he's getting out. Right. If he's running low on air and now he's got to stop and do something that takes two or three minutes, that's two or three minutes of air mm-hmm. that he may not have. Yeah, that he tested Well, and I think that Eduardo even said that. He said he thought that Ben was jumping the fence anyway, and he would try and save him some time, so he unlocked the gate. Mm -hmm. Even though he knew, we should make it very clear, he knew that Ben was not certified and not well-trained to be cave diving. Mm -hmm. And actually, um, you know, to speak to Ben's talent as a diver. His aptitude. Aptitude, if you will. um, That guy I was talking about earlier, Nick who uh, records all these videos. There's lots and lots of videos out here, there that he has. And I believe, and I'm. this is just me putting a couple things together, so I'm not 100% sure on this, so please don't crucify me if I'm wrong on this. But Nick has a video called uh, The Lost Diver in the Piano Room, and it's like a three-part thing. And it's him and his diving partner are going down on a routine swim. They record the whole thing. And then when they're swimming around the piano room, they encounter a diver who, I guess, is maybe lost. I don't know. Who I believe is Ben. Didn't they say they thought it was him after the fact? Um, I, you know, I don't know. Here, the way that I put this together was this guy who films these videos named Nick. um, And then in this movie that we watched, Nick's, or Ben's Vortex. They show a Facebook post that Ben had made a couple days before he went missing that said, oh, I think I interrupted a video shoot today when I was down training. Uh, Nick was down there and he was, he was, you know, filming and I think that they, you know, they helped me find my way out or something like that. So I believe that this is the case and I, again, I don't know that for sure, but I think if it is Ben, so the way that cave side divers tank. yeah they do this side tank thing where you think of a normal scuba diver they have the tanks on their back instead when you're ca- um, cave diving you s- mount them to your side so that you're slimmer behind your armpits yeah they run along the sides of your body so that you are a when swimming horizontally you're not a thick yeah so you're flatter so mm-hmm. that you can maneuver yourself in and to and out of crevices yeah. easier um, so it looks like Ben is really struggling well, it's hard to say. I saw the same video, and it could be that, or he could have just been fooling around. I mean, he could have I been. I don't know. I really don't know. It looks like I can't really, he, I, it's, really, it's hard to say what what the hell exactly he's well, doing. Well, it's hard to say. I mean, it's hard to see too. It but is. it's hard to say. Because it's pitch black except for the two beams. Yeah. Yeah. They, those guys need to work on their lighting. <laughs> they really do. Well, you know, back to the buoyancy issue. It seems like he's kind of floating he's having a hard time diving like he's not using the right amount of weight mm-hmm, yeah to compensate for it does the look tanks. like that a lot and it looks like he's moving more awkwardly than the videos of people who are trained with the side mount system that i've seen and he's also doing the hand signal for like which way um so he's trying to signal to nick which and way his up partner. and which way down i think well i don't know it's just all this hand signal is is which way i mean obviously when you're scuba diving you can't say like which way up which way down the hard part about that video though is i agree with joe at times i thought maybe he was screwed around but the mm-hmm. other part that's really difficult to tell what's going on and potentially wrong is that everybody is spinning in space and there are times where you can tell the camera is upside down and the person in frame is upside down because you know the bubbles 
yeah. should be going above them, and instead uh-huh. they're heading towards their feet. They're yeah. standing on the ceiling. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's hard. It's hard to tell, but um, it's in- it's interesting to see if that is indeed Ben. Mm-hmm. It doesn't look like he's very confident or moving as fluidly as you would hope somebody who's attempting dives mm-hmm. like the ones that I think he's attempting. So yep. I just wanted yeah. to also throw that out there too. Yeah, yeah. No, that's maybe. Just, I don't know. It's hard to, it, again, it's hard to say what he's doing. And yeah. It's dark. No. It is dark and it's a murky little video. It, yeah, well that's the problem. And that's the thing, again, I think we talked about this a little bit more but before, but cave diving, the only light that you have is the light that you bring. Mm-hmm. So if you have crap, you ever had a car that had crappy headlights? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. And then you got a car that had good headlights? You're like, oh my god, how did I not run anybody over? Mm-hmm. It's the same thing cave diving. You got yeah. crappy little headlights. You're not going to see very well. Yeah. No. And that's what makes that video so difficult. Yeah. But back to Ben and Eduardo. Uh, as we said, Eduardo figured that Ben was bypassing the gate, so he, he unlocks it. And then normally what Chuck and Eduardo would do is they would finish their dive, they'd go topside, and they'd wait until they saw Ben's bubbles coming to the surface. Because that meant he was out of the cave, he was going through the decompression process, things should be fine. And then so that leave. was a fairly frequent occurrence then, that Ben would dive at night. He had obviously done it several times. Okay. Uh, yeah. And these guys, I really feel like they were kind of trying to look out for him. Like, mm-hmm. that idiot. Right. Like, well, hang on. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll keep an eye for him mm-hmm. in case something seems like it's not right, and then we'll have to, we'll go try and help. Sure. That's, that's the sense that I got. Uh, but instead, this particular night, they didn't wait for Ben. They left. Yeah, what the mm-hmm. heck? They had, took off. They had something going on, probably. Well, yeah, I think they went to Eduardo's house I and heard, had coffee. Yeah. And besides which, you can't be babysitting you know, this guy all the time. No. Right? Yeah. Although, it is a little suspicious that this is the one night they didn't stay. But fine, whatever. I know. But that, okay. that is raised a lot. Mm-hmm. It is suspicious the one time they don't stay, mm-hmm. he disappears. Yeah. So, those guys go home. Mm-hmm. The next day, Ben's truck is in the parking lot because mm-hmm. he has not, uh, that we know of, come out of the water. Mm-hmm. Nobody notices. Well, you know, notice I'm using notice with quotes, and that means it was a Thursday, though it was August, so maybe school was still out, it was particularly hot, very busy. They said they didn't notice it because they were busy. I, You know, I think that doesn't bother me that much. I think you're a little busy, so what you're really saying is I didn't notice Ben. Because if he was diving at the rate that he that we seem to think he was diving at, it's totally possible that he would get there really early in the morning and go for a dive, oh, and very then valid hang point. out in the middle of the day when it's really busy, and then go for a night dive after everybody's left, and that they were used to just seeing his truck there all the time. Yep, true. And so what they're really saying is we didn't notice Ben around, but you know his truck is always there anyway. His truck is there. He's probably off underwater somewhere. Yeah, you know, so, you know and yeah. that's. A, that's a really good point. I'd never heard anybody. I mean, we've heard about his night diving habit. Yeah. We'd never, I've never actually seen anything that said if Ben was an early riser and was in the water at six when they opened up at eight, they just, well, uh, Ben's, Ben's diving again. It mm-hmm. sounds like he was doing a very accelerated process. He so really I was. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me to find out that he was often there early in the morning too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so uh, the next day is the 20th of August. That's a Friday and that's the second day he's missing. Uh, Eduardo actually is the one who recognized the truck and realized that it hadn't moved and asked around and nobody said they had seen Ben and so then he turned around and called the cops. Yeah, he probably thought, oh, I left on Thursday and I was been there the entire time. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, probably something like that. The police came, they they searched the truck, they find Ben's wallet, it's got 700 bucks in cash in it, uh, there's equipment and his logbook in the pickup. Uh, they eventually, when they can't find him, they, they bring cadaver dogs. Dogs. Uh, cadaver dogs, for those who don't know, I know we've talked about them they're, they're, before. They're not, they're not cadavers. <laughs> no, no, the dogs are not cadavers. Yeah. They are dogs that react to the smell of a decomposing human body. Yeah. Those dogs were brought and supposedly triggered when they smelled the water. I don't. Mm. I have a hard time with it as well. I uh, I don't think the body would have started decomposing that quickly. I don't think so either. I don't so, think that they could have smelled cool it water. if it was under 80 or 100 feet of water yeah. like that. And plus, there's going to be other things dying. Of course, cadaver dogs are well trained to differentiate between, say, a dead possum and a dead human being. Correct? They're supposed to. 
supposed to be, Supposedly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I have a difficulty with the whole cadaver dog thing, but you will see that reported. They, like I said, they they signaled on the body. So No, they signaled on the water. <clears throat> thank you. Yes, they signaled on the water. Mm-hmm. And at that point, local divers who were certified to go into the cave and knew what and found out what Ben had been doing went into the cave. And those divers logged hour upon hour 